What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I go about doing visual effects with a green screen. All right, so one of the most important things whenever you're doing a green screen video is that you wanna eliminate these things. Now let me show you how I go about doing that. You wanna make sure that you have a perfectly flat background with your green screen. This will just help you eliminate any kind of shadows that may arise. So I got this one, it's got these like little clips on the side. As tight as they can be. This is pretty much good enough. All right, so now we're going to go over how you wanna place the light to the green screen so that you can eliminate shadows as best as you can. So usually what I do is have mine over here to the side, lighting, you know, casting the light onto the screen. That way when I get in front of it, there's like no shadow or, you know, barely any shadow, you know, that you're not gonna have any issue with whenever you go to edit it out. So this light right here that I have is called a NAN light. And this is what I use to light the green screen. So the next thing to do is gonna be placing your subject in the right spot in front of the green screen. Now I got the green screen set up how I want it. It's perfectly flat, no wrinkles. And I have the light set up how I want it. As you can see, I still kind of have some shadows, but what you wanna do is get it to a place in front of the screen where there's no more shadow. And once you've done that, you're good to go, ready to shoot. So once I've loaded up the background that I want and the footage into After Effects, I'll go on to begin the editing process. So the first thing I do is take my background, scale it down to the size I want, and then bring in the footage. And then I'll create a mask around the subject. And once I do that, I will automate the mask to capture all of the movement of the subject throughout the entire clip. Next, I go into the effects presets, select a key light plugin and drag it onto the footage. Now I use the dropper tool to key out the green. Go to view, select screen mat, screen mat and clip out the black until your entire subject is just white on top of black. By the way, you're gonna want to select either a third or a quarter of the quality while you're editing so that it's easier for your computer to process everything and it's just a faster and more efficient workflow. So I did something special here for the lightsaber blade prop. What I did was automate the mask that's around the subject to automatically follow the lightsaber prop ignition so that I could have something to guide me while I add the extra lightsaber effects in later. The next thing that I do is track the lightsaber blade prop. Go to tracking, track motion, click position and rotation to track the starting point and the tip of the lightsaber. I then let the computer track the motion automatically only when the prop is very still because it's easier for the computer. When the subject begins moving, you have to actually manually move the tracker wherever the computer misses the motion you're trying to track. See, at this point, I'm pretty still, so I'm letting the computer track me automatically instead of having to manually move it but as i start to move more then you have to help it out every frame of the clip you need to go and manually move the trackers all right now that we're done tracking the lightsaber motion create a white solid name it Saber. Now I use the Saber effect and load it up onto the white solid. Then go over here to edit target, click Saber, then click apply, and X and Y. Now all your tracking information is connected to the lightsaber effect. I go down to where it says render settings, transparent. Now you're gonna line up the starting point and the ending point of the lightsaber with the prop. Now the lightsaber effect should automatically track with your lightsaber prop. Now I'm gonna make the core bigger to match the size of the prop and then turn up the softness of the core a little bit to make it look a little bit more realistic. 
Now just like in the tracking stage, you're gonna have to do the exact same thing with the lightsaber effects. It's tracking with the prop blade, but you still have to like make minor adjustments throughout the entire thing to really get the effect that you're going for. It is tedious, but it's what it takes. If you end up using this plugin, the Saber plugin, make sure that you click the automation buttons next to core start and core end whenever you make small adjustments throughout the clip so that it'll automatically cover the prop wherever the subject moves it around. Now I'm gonna automate the lightsaber effects to match the movement of the lightsaber prop whenever it ignites. Now the way to do that is to go into the saber effect, automate the end offset, and basically just set keyframes to match exactly how the lightsaber prop ignites. And here I'm just making the final tweaks and adjustments that I need to in order to keep the lightsaber blade prop covered up the entire time. Now here, the lightsaber goes behind me, so what you have to do is mask out the core on the saber effect layer. Then go over to the mask you just made and select subtract. Then on the saber effect, go to render settings and enable masks. Make sure to click the automation button next to the mask path so that the mask automatically will cut out the core from when the lightsaber goes behind you. Now I'm just adjusting the color to match better with the lighting from the lightsaber. Here I'm adding some ignition effects that I picked up from someone to add some extra flair to the effect. So I notice a little bit of my footage was a little see-through in some parts. And so I am using a key cleaner here to solve that issue. I'm also making some minor adjustments here on the edges of the subject to make it a little bit more cleaner and to help it blend better. Now all that's left is to do the sound. If you want to see a video on how I do the sound, just leave a comment below and let me know. And thanks for watching the video. If this was helpful to you, give it a like. Stay tuned for more Star Wars and VFX related content like this. And may the force be with you.